Hi guys, the History Kid here, and today we bring you guys some more of this The Police and Blue Lives Matter. So, we're already on day 3, July 17th. Uh, Frank just kind of got a retirement date. We already ready. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, sorry guys about the two hour video. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to press the stop recording. Some pipes in my house bust and I need to wait for the plumber. Can I take a day off? Yes, yes. Come back tomorrow. Okay, let's start the day. I'm not gonna play any music because I don't want to get copyrighted. And probably gonna have some dialogue ahead. So we have been living on St. John's Cathedral. So everyone's in Van Dahl and Grant. Alright, so we can hire some uh, people. Need a for shift day. Okay, suspicious individual. Hey, we just named Myla. Reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and a Daiko to a dangerous criminal she's seen on television just this morning. Well, this might be serious. One cent Burke Jr. Stove Stoveball. So we haven't had any hostage situations yet. So hopefully you can stay that way because I do not want to lose a police officer. That would be terrible. Okay, a suspicious individual go. Pause some more. <laughs> Mr. Boyd, my bad just stuffed himself in Mexico. No, I think he's part of the mafia. It's not gonna happen. <coughs> so. oh, we have two thousand four hundred dollars. It's really bad. Any more eleven eleven drug sales. Hmm. Send you must send Grant, okay? Grant up with minus 10. But, uh, that's gonna end the day, guys. Let's 
let's get into the dialogue and great voice acting in this game. So as you can see, this is Shift A, and that's Shift B. Checkpoint. Day 4, July 18th, Thursday. Aspire to reveal his identity when the time is right. Enemies using feminists to destroy Freebird. Feminist organization divided an official registration. Alright. Whenever I'm alone at home, and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either. But according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. <laughs> but a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door on his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally when a wife is going to leave home she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello? Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? I'm too tired. I can hold on. Start Can I go home? start today. <clears throat> that was a very great. 
story I think. A racist group has led me made some trouble in the city. They're capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. They recently sent a message to a local radio station promised to kill all black doctors, firemen, and police. We don't need any more dead police. We should probably see not mere months before the election. The racists are gaining more and more followers, and even some of our citizens support them. Suspicious individual desire mark. Corey Ranson, mother of several children, had expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing fitful coals seated on a bench inside the playground. He's been watching the children for an hour and taking several photographs of them. Well, this is weird. What is the price?